Hi guys! So I decided to do a Q&A video before the baby comes. So um, I have not been doing a lot of vlogging lately and I definitely wanted to get a video up. Everybody has been asking lots of questions and so I am outside on the carport so um, you will be hearing probably lots of wind and other noises but hopefully it won't be too distracting <laughs> because I have to take advantage of the time that I get, right? So. I got a lot of questions, you guys, a lot of questions. So this will be good. I'll be able to break it up hopefully into um, a part one and a part two and potentially a part three, depending on how long it takes me to answer these questions. Um, and I have been outside doing a little bit of yard work, so I'm a little bit sweaty. So forgive me for the way I look, but let's answer a few questions. Okay. So the first question is, have you co-slept with any of your children and what are your thoughts on attachment parenting? Um, so yes, we co-slept with Maddie and still do. <laughs> she still sleeps in our bed. Um, it was more out of necessity than anything, not exactly a, um, like a cut, like an attachment parenting, um, method that we were going with. Um, a lot of you know the story about how difficult she was as an infant and quite frankly the only way that I could sleep when she was a baby was to put her in bed with me and I would nurse her um, off and on all night long for us to be able to get some sleep so that created kind of a bad habit she's still in our bed I would like for her to move to her bed we've attempted it, it just it's one of those things where it's kind of on again off again um, it's just really tough so, I'm hoping and praying that she will, um, you know, do better in her bed uh, very soon. Her mattress isn't all that comfortable, so we need to get like a mattress topper or something like that. I think that will help. Um, my thoughts on attachment parenting, I think that you do whatever works. <laughs> so, whether that means you wear your baby all the time, if that's what works for you and your baby, then do it by all means. Um, if sleeping with your baby is what works for you and your baby, do it by all means. If you know that you've got to go back to work and you don't, you know, you're going to need that baby to be able to self-soothe more and put, um, kind of help to put itself to sleep instead of always relying on you, um, then I think maybe, you know, do whatever works. I mean, maybe don't, don't co-sleep and don't baby wear all the time and, Things like that. So, um, I'm very laid back as far as that's concerned. If attachment parenting works for you, that's amazing. We very much went with that method with Maddie because that's just the type of baby that she was. Um, and that's just what we did. So, um, a homemaker cleans. What's your favorite and least favorite part about having a new baby? Oh, goodness. New babies, aren't they sweet? They're just like seeing your baby for the first time. I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm very much looking forward to meeting Solomon. I'm looking forward to seeing him and what he looks like and just um, just everything that comes with a new baby. It's just really a fresh, I don't know, it's like a totally new experience every single time. The miraculousness of it never gets old. Um, I love it. <laughs> I love the way they smell. I love just all of it. But. <laughs> I really, really, really dislike the adjustment period afterwards. That is my least part about, my least favorite part about having a new baby is getting used to the new baby and everyone acclimating to the new baby and developing new routines and um, maybe lowering my expectations on myself because I find that very difficult for myself and um, a lot of the, you know, um, the issues that arise sometimes with the other children and it's just a whole okay and then top that all off with hormones and I think the first like the first four weeks or so I'm really they can be <laughs> you know really difficult if you know if you've had I know you know <laughs> so if you've had um, any other children you know that first what do they call it the like 10th or the fourth trimester 10th trimester the fourth trimester is like that whole adjustment period so I guess I'm kind of not looking forward to that <laughs> um, and the sleep deprivation 
which I'm hoping is not going to be severe like it was with. Okay, so um, this question says, I was just watching J. Merrill Stewart's video on baby wearing last night and it got my brain a spinning. Do you baby wear? With this being my third, I'm thinking I'm going to have to. I tried a Moby with my second and I could just never figure it out. She was teeny tiny four pounds though, so everything was a challenge. Um, I do baby wear. Again, I think it's um, very baby dependent. Some babies prefer to be kind of left alone and set down. I had one like that. Jacob preferred to be put in a swing or put in a bouncy seat or just simply laid down in his crib and he would just go straight to sleep. Um, and he was very content to do that. So I think it depends on the baby. I will be baby wearing um, if this baby prefers it. Um, I have a Moby and I also have an Ergo. So I think we'll start out with the uh, Moby and then we will move to the er Ergo. I've never used a Moby before, but I'm looking forward to um, trying it and getting used to it. And if I can get it down pat, then I will share, um, you know, how, how I'm doing it and how that's working out. So we're going to give the Moby a go. Um, I'm really out of breath, you guys. By the way, if you don't know, I'm 38 weeks. I'm 38 weeks and two days. Wait a minute. Yes. 38 plus two. I feel very 38 weekish. <laughs> and I am really tired. And my stomach is constantly in pain from stretching. And I have a feeling this is. This could be my biggest baby, I'm not sure. So I may be looking at a 10 pounder. Maddie was 9, 12. And she and Gavin tied. He was 9, 12 as well. So we'll see. This could be another big baby. <laughs> it certainly feels as though he is. So I'm out of breath. Bear with me. All right. So the next question Will the new baby be rooming up with Mason after the co sleeping stage? And how are you all budgeting from going from two incomes down to one? Oh man, I could talk all day on that one question. <laughs> so, um, first, let's just take it first things first. Will the new baby be rooming with Mason after the co-sleeping stage? I have no clue about what we are going to do because our hopes are to move <laughs> fairly soon after the beginning of uh the year so I don't know if that's gonna happen I don't know you know sometimes our best laid out plans don't really come to fruition because God has other plans so um, we'll just have to wait and see I don't really know he um, I would there's such a gap in age you know and so I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly how we will work that out um, and how are we budgeting from going from two incomes to one? That has been a challenge for us. Um, our, 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 I sound really country right now. Our bills were set up, you know, on what we could afford when I was working and based on my husband's income. Because of the fact that me not working was not planned, um, it kind of threw us for a loop and quite frankly, has been a pretty significant struggle for us over the past maybe four months or so. Um, it's just, it's just been a struggle. Um, we, you know, unfortunately have debt. I would like to say that we don't, but we do. And so we've had to really cut back. Um, if you used to follow us before, you'll, you'll notice the change in lifestyle. So we used to do a lot of eating out. We used to do a lot of shopping at Target and all these other places. Um, we used to just kind of here, there, go here, there, and everywhere. We've had to really, really reel that in. And we have gone through very, very, very lean times over the past several months. But <laughs> we're making it and you just, you, you, you learn what you can afford and what you can't afford and you just have to base your lifestyle around that so to say that it's not been a challenge would be a complete lie and um it's been um it's been good and bad in some degrees i will say it has definitely taught us to rely a lot on god for our needs 
Um, we've had to really exercise our faith. We have had to cut back in every aspect where we can. And we've learned to be um, just, you know, to be a little bit smarter with how we use our resources. And um, also, you know, I just feel like it has really been a, a growth period for us because we have learned that the Lord does provide. So I hope that answers your question to some degree. And I'm hoping to do more of a detailed video on that topic soon. All right, so how soon? Nobody knows. <laughs> All right, next question. Let's see. Do you still use essential oils? And do you think this baby will be your last or are you open to having more? So I use essential oils um, sparingly right now just because, like I said, we're on a really, really strict budget and I only have a few left. And so I'm just using what I have around the house. Um, some that I'm out of that I love that I need, I would love to buy again soon. I'm so uncomfortable, sorry. Is lavender. I'm out of lavender. I'm out of the peace and calming that I love. Love, love, love for sleep for the kiddos. Um, stress away. And... Lavender, peace and calming, stress away, purification, I like to use in my cleaning. Um, anyway, I'm out of all my favorite oils. We'll just put it that way. So I need to get some more. But I'm still using um, Thieves. I'm still using like Eucalyptus and Cypress for like bug spray. And... What else am I using regularly right now? I'm trying to think if there's any more. Um, I have like kind of an off-brand uh, stress relief blend that I'm using. And that's pretty much all I'm using right now at the moment. Okay. Mama DeFore says, what was your most surprising part? Oh, I'm sorry. Second Part of that other question was, do you think this baby will be your last or are you open to have more? And this baby, we are planning to be our last. <laughs> so, um, we're going to try to figure out what kind of precautions to take um, to, to make sure that this is our last baby. But I don't do birth control. So, it'll be some other type of method. <laughs> um, what was your most surprising part about becoming a mom? Oh my goodness, becoming a mom. I, when I had Jacob, I had no idea I could love another human the way I loved him when he was first born. I think the love that, that you have for your child, like, it just is something that you can't understand until you experience it. That has to be the most surprising part about, like, being a new, you know, a new mom for the first time. Um, anything else? Just the love and everything that comes with that kind of love. You know, just being willing to sacrifice pretty much everything and all of your comforts for them. So, next question is um, from mom of two silly girls. I haven't been saying you guys' name. I'm sorry. What was your most surprising... No, no, no. Is Maddie sleeping in her bed? And is everybody excited about the new baby? Well, I answered that earlier. No, not not we will put her in her bed occasionally <laughs> we were doing it regularly but and then she comes and gets in our bed in the middle of the night don't you i'm watching you <laughs> so that's that and is everybody excited i think this one is really super excited more so than anybody else mm -hmm. but um the boys are just kind of like okay mm -hmm. you know it is what it is i, I don't do that mm -hmm. so I think they are, <laughs> but boys don't really verbalize it as much as girls. Here comes the big wind. All right, next question. Mom dot three dot girls. My kids have been having a lot of jealousy issues since my last one, three months old. Now, do you think Maddie will have that issue, and how do you think you will help her through it? Um, I hope not. But my experience in the past tells me yes, we will have some jealousy issues. Um, so, I think that if you have a spouse in the house, 
that you can kind of divide and conquer in this area, I think it helps tremendously. I'm sorry if my chimes are really bothering you guys. Um, I think the most important part is talk to them, number one. Try your hardest to spend some one-on-one -on -one time every single day with that, with the other child without the baby. So, Jimmy and I had a conversation last night about um, the fact that I really do want him to try and, like in the evenings, take the baby so that I can really um, maybe lay with her in her bed and have some cuddle time, just one-on-one, -on -one, and maybe we can establish a new bedtime routine or something like that for her just so that she does feel like mommy is still here, mommy still cuddles her at night, and um, you know, things like that. I think that, like I said, it's my least favorite part about having a new baby in the house, and everybody feels it. Everybody goes through that adjustment period where they're trying to figure out what is our new norm, <laughs> because everything feels different, everything is different, and that is really difficult um, waters to really trudge through, but I know from experience that it does get better so it's just one of those things that you have to just kind of do the best that you can show some one-on-one -on -one attention as much as you can I think involving her in the care of the baby and really praising her for doing um, things with a new baby will help tremendously and I plan on doing that with her so um, I don't think I mean, I don't, I'm not super concerned about the other kids, but I'm sure that we will need to make a conscientious effort. Excuse me. A conscious effort. Oh my goodness, pregnancy indigestion. Um, to show everybody lots and lots of love <laughs> during that first little period. Okay. Um, e. Edwards, 85. This might be my last. Well, maybe I can do a few more. Um, says, love your channel, and I'm thinking of starting my own. I'm a single mom of four and not sure how it would fit it into my daily or weekly life. So my question to you is, how do you manage to find the time to run a home, raise your beautiful children, homeschool, massive truck going down the road, Um, homeschool and record, edit, and upload videos, which you do uh, every one of them perfectly, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. You're a true super mom. So, okay. I am not super mom, first of all. <laughs> oh, boy, if you guys only knew. But, I think that starting your own YouTube channel, just go for it. I think go for it. Just do it. Just, just create one. Film something easy on your phone, hit record, talk about something that you want to talk about, upload that first video, and don't think twice about it. No editing, no nothing. Just upload it. And then see how that feels. See, see if that's something that you enjoy doing. And then if you do, if you enjoy doing it, then it really doesn't feel like a ton of work. Um, but you have to see what works for you. Um, back... When I first started my YouTube channel, I was religiously uploading a video every single day. Um, I did that for quite some time, but I did sort of burn out uh, when we went through some difficult times. I just couldn't keep up with it, and um, I, something had to give. I was working um, and homeschooling and trying to run my household and trying to do daily YouTube videos and um, I felt like I was doing too much and I felt like I was kind of hitting a breaking point so I had to decide to tone it down on a few things and YouTube videos um, I had to cut back on um, Time management, so time management, okay, is all about priorities, right? We know this. I mean, I feel like this is kind of like a generic, just standard answer, but it's all about priorities and how do you view what you're doing? So, you need to really look at what is what is your priorities in, in your home, your family, the education of your children, if you do that. Um, making sure that, you know, your role as a wife and mom and 
everything that comes along with that. Um, if you are a wife, I know you said you're single. I think you said you're single mom. So you have it. I mean, my hat's off to you because that is incredibly, I don't know how you're doing it, hard. <laughs> so um, definitely utmost respect for that. So um, just do what you can handle and see how that goes. Just see how, what you can do. I, we have a kind of a rhythm. A lot of times it's not a great rhythm, but it is our family's rhythm. We tend to stay up a little bit later at night. We tend to be kind of night owls, so we could sort of sleep in in the mornings. I used to fight that and feel guilty about it, but I don't anymore because that's just our rhythm. So um, we stay up kind of late, we sleep in kind of late, and during those evening hours where I have already done all the work for the day, and I've cleaned up the kitchen from dinner, and I've gotten the kids ready for bed and or in the bed, that is when I do my editing. That is when I like to up upload my videos because I can have that uninterrupted time in the evenings. That is also the time that my husband and I spend watching TV, chit-chatting, um, just doing whatever. So while I'm editing, I'm talking to him, we're watching, we're just doing all kind of stuff. We're watching TV, we're reading books, we're just doing whatever. That's our time. Um, so our rhythm is really what dictates what I have time for. Um, we, I usually set aside three to four hours a day for homeschool. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. So we just kind of go with the flow. But we usually don't even do our homeschool until 11 or 12 o'clock. That's just what works for us. We like to get up. We like to have breakfast, do our chores. I always start a load of laundry and switch out, you know, anything that may need switching out or putting away. At that point, I have the kids brush their teeth and get their clothes on and clean their rooms. And um, that way I have sort of a tidy house to start um, my day with, like around 10, 30, 11, sometimes later. So we will do lunch and we will do, we'll start homeschool and then usually break after a few subjects for lunch and finish up in the late afternoon while I'm cooking dinner, et cetera, et cetera. That tends to be our normal routine every single day. It's what works for us. And you just have to figure out what works for you. So that was a super long-winded, rambly answer. I'm sorry.